stop a gout flare in its tracks. And we start right now. Hi, my name is Dr. Pete. I have a PhD in biochemistry and I am a Nutrition Network coach practitioner. In 2016, I was diagnosed with gout. And then in 2019, I was diagnosed with prediabetes. Since then, I have thrown all my weight, all of my intellectual weight and my background in biochemistry in understanding these metabolic disorders and looking for meaningful, practical solutions to gout and prediabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and so on down the road. In today's episode, we are gonna talk about a potential method of treatment in order to stop a gout flare in its tracks. In order for us to all be on the same page, let's just quickly review what we need for a gout flare, the gout hypothesis. Don't forget that the hypothesis is based on the chondrocyte, which is the specialized biological cell whose responsibility it is in order to provide a healthy functioning joint. Under the standard American diet, we have the delivery to the synovial fluid, hyperglycemia, alcohol, and fructose from added sugars, which causes an inflammatory event within the chondrocyte, producing an acute intracellular rise in uric acid, which drives the intracellular inflammation that leads to uh, that leads to the delivery of monosodium urate into the synovial space, along with IL-1-beta, which is an inflammatory cytokine, along with IL-6, an, an inflammatory cytokine that attracts the innate immune system. Finally, the arrival of monosodium urate in the synovial fluid, either from the extrusion coming from the chondrocyte or entry from the circulatory system results in the crystallization of monosodium urate in the synovial fluid, which is then taken up by the innate immune system in combination with the monosodium urate crystals initiates and activates the assembly of the NLR P3 inflammasome along with potentially other inflammasomes and we end up generating the gout flare. Now let's roll through the evidence for the hypothesis that I just summarized. This first slide shows the Liegeon paper from 2015 that provided evidence that under hyperglycemic conditions in the synovial fluid bathing the chondrocyte that the polyol pathway that feeds into fructose metabolism with the acute rise in uric acid that there is evidence for the existence of this in the chondrocyte. This paper in 2021 provides evidence for the key enzymes in the production of uric acid in the chondrocyte, the exanthine oxidoreductase and exanthine oxidase. These next two papers are fundamentally very important if you hope to understand my presentation today. They deal with a protein that is responsible for degrading the matrix in the cartilage and also the activation of the NLR P3 inflammasome. And the reason they are so important to us is because both the protein, which is responsible for degrading the matrix, and the activation of the NLR P3 inflammasome in a mono sodium urate dependency is temperature dependent. This paper by Shi et al. published in 2021 describes the data on a paper which is called matrix metalloproteinase 3 in a chondrocyte model where this protein was induced by the movement of uric acid across urate 1 into the chondrocyte where then this protein was induced, whose responsibility it is to degrade the matrix, which is part of the cartilaginous environment. This protein called MMP-3 is required in part for the gout flare and may 
be providing degradation products that can act as an effector potentially in the initiation event of the formation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. And it is found that this, the induction of this protein is temperature dependent. It happens at a lower temperature which is common to the foot by comparison to our core body temperature. And this paper published by Ahn in 2021 shows convincing data that the MSU monosodium urate activated formation of the NLRP3 inflammasome is indeed temperature dependent. In other words, the activation is optimized at a lower temperature like the temperatures that we find in our foot relative to our core body temperature, which is usually several degrees higher. So this begs the question, does this new data that I'm presenting for the first time present a strategy for, for us to literally either prevent or interrupt a gout flare? We know that induction of MMP-3 and then the crystal dependent formation of the NLRP3 inflammasome with the innate immune system happens at a lower temperature than physiological temperature. It happens at a lower temperature than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So everyone here understands. It happens at a lower temperature. So in the case of a gout flare, if we take our foot and we immerse it in hot water and we leave it there for an adequate amount of time, it is possible that we can interrupt this process of the gout flare. And this is gonna happen for three reasons. The first is by raising the temperature of our foot, we increase the solubility of monosodium urate so that the crystals dissolve, which will give them a chance to diffuse and be dispersed into the circulatory system. Secondly, by elevating the temperature, we inhibit the induction of MMP3. We stop the degradation of the matrix. And third, by raising the temperature of the foot, we inhibit the formation of the crystal dependent formation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. And therefore, we should be able to literally put the kibosh on the flare. Now look, there are gonna be some people that literally say that what I'm talking about at this point is just plain woo woo. But here's the deal, I had a recent flare and I was in the midst of preparing for the very video we were gonna to do today, which, which back then would have been completely hypothetical. But because I was reading about the temperature dependence of this process, I tried this and it cut my flare. And I'm not joking about this. I, I soaked my foot in seriously warm water. Then before I went to bed and the next day when I got up, the flare was like, it was amazingly reduced. All right, guys, this is really simple to do. So this is the foot where I have my gout flare. I don't have one uh, today, but I am doing a simulation. So you get the shoe off there if you've just been up from bed then maybe you're, you already maybe you just have a socked foot or maybe it's a bare foot all right gonna roll the pants up this guy here has water in it out of the tap as hot as I can stand it now please use common sense right the water should not be so hot that you're going to burn yourself uh, get yourself set up in a comfortable chair somewhere right? Uh, put the foot in there. Make sure that you've got enough water so that the joint is completely covered, right? And again, it should be as hot as you can stand it. The, the goal here is to warm the foot up. Then make sure also you've got a towel or something next to this, so uh, next to where you're sitting so you can dry your foot when you're done. And get yourself a good book. At the end of the session, you've got your handy towel, dry the appendage off, all right, and it's going to be nice and warm. Keep it that way. You know, uh, don't go hiking around on a cold tile floor or something like that. 
get it socked up right away so that the foot stays warm. And in the morning, because I'm not going back to bed, right, then I put my shoe on right away. And again, what I'm trying to do is make sure that my foot does not cool down. So additional tips and suggestions. I recommend that the, the evening soak before you go to bed, right before bed, and the morning soak before you really start your day is at least 30 minutes. And I know that uh, before I went to bed, I actually did was reading my book and I went for like about 45 uh, minutes total. If you're taking a urate lowering drug, make sure to maintain it and maintain consistency. This is really important in the midst of a flare. Don't start changing things. If you're taking uh, keto citra or you're taking potassium citrate, maintain your consistency. Do not make changes. The reason for the last two comments is because we want to avoid major changes in either uric acid moving up or moving down. We want uric acid that is being solubilized in the joint to be able to freely move back into the circulatory system where it can be eliminated by the kidneys. Use a handheld meter to monitor your uric acid. And finally, the only anti-inflammatory that I took during the flare that I'm talking about that I interrupted with heat treatment was ibuprofen. For the urate lowering supplements, quercetin and tart cherry, see my link in the show notes. Additionally, if you're interested in Keto Citra, look for the link in the show notes to Santa Barbara Nutrients, and there will also be a code there for a free sample. To summarize, I believe that hot water immersion of a gout joint can indeed shorten the flare, and I would recommend giving it a shot. If this is the first time you've joined me, and you feel like there's a lot of information that you need to learn that I didn't cover here, I have linked a gout playlist here. I hope that you find this information useful and I would really appreciate it if you are having a gout flare to try it and comment in the comment section below and let me know how it worked out. Your input is super important. And again, if this is the first time that you have joined me, please hit the subscription button and the bell next to it. And I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place.